Hi. I want to welcome you to the Create Your Eat Well in 2021 plan webinar. I'm super excited that you're here, and I can't wait to help you get started. So let's make 2021 your year, the year that you actually take control of how you eat and feel. The opportunity really is to use food as medicine. The power is in your hands. You can activate healthy eating to feel better, improve your moods, your energy, your sleep, get to and stay at your ideal weight, and get relief from things like joint pain, headaches, digestive issues, skin issues. And you can prevent and manage diseases like diabetes or any elevations in your blood sugar level heart disease and stroke, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, autoimmune conditions, and cancer. In today's session, I'm going to help you turn I want to eat better into I am actually eating better and feeling amazing. Together, we're going to create your plan to do it in 2021. We're going to identify why this matters to you, give you two simple actions you can leave and, and put into place in your life, and we're going to help you map some food ideas that will get you eating better for you. And at the end of this, I'm going to share a URL with you and tell you a little bit more about my program that's running at Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. It's designed to help people turn healthy eating into a lifestyle that they love. And the URL that you go, you'll go to for more information is www.saveryliving.com forward slash HPHC. So let's get started. This is me and my family. Uh, my name is Sue Levy, and I created Savory Living. I'm a behavior change expert, and I've spent 20 years creating programs to help people improve their health. And my mission is to make millions of lives better with the power of food as medicine. I know firsthand what's possible when you get your eating working better for you. So I'm 49 years old, and I want to take you back to my mid-30s because that's really when my health started to change. So I had headaches. I had digestive issues. So IBS, heartburn. I was diagnosed with GERD, and I had delayed stomach emptying. My cholesterol and triglycerides were rising, and then I got a really scary diagnosis that I live with today. So I live with LAM. It's an ultra rare and progressive lung disease. And when I got diagnosed, they said it's really not good. Uh, most women with my condition need a lung transplant in 10 years time. And only half of the women are still alive 10 years after a transplant. So you can imagine to hear that I might only have until I was 54 years old to live was pretty show stopping. But I'm an optimist. You'll get that sense about me. And they said that lifestyle intervention could help. And so I went back to school to study nutrition, really just to put in place what the experts in the scientific and medical community had to say about eating to support your health and slow down disease. And when done correctly, healthy eating reduces inflammation, which is connected to most of the major diseases and conditions of our time. And when I figured out how to activate it in my life, well, that's when the real transformation happened. I took off the belly fat, no more headaches, cholesterol and triglycerides normal, and I'm going to knock on wood here because it's now 14 years and I am not on a single medication to manage my digestive issues and my lungs, I'm really going to knock, have been holding firm and strong. Then there's my moods, my energy, my sleep. It all just got so much better. So what I know is that what they tell us is absolutely right. How we eat really matters, but changing it can be so hard to do. One size doesn't fit all, but it's really possible. It just takes knowledge, new food skills, and support to make it happen. And so I created Savory Living to put that power in your hands to help people figure out how to activate healthy eating, to reduce their inflammation, to feel great, and to get the cooking and the flavoring and the easy food skills you need to turn it into a delicious lifestyle that you love. So I'm super excited to take you through some ideas today. So if you're like anybody out there, right, you probably know you want to eat better and you've tried to do it, but over half of us say it's actually easier to do our taxes than it is to figure out how to make it happen. And that's translating into our behavior is not really changing. This is from the director of the USDA, and they say Americans have not made significant improvements in their diet quality over the past 10 years. I'm here to tell you it's not you, it's them. 
I'm sure like anybody, you've tried the weight loss programs, the diets, the meal plans, the articles, the recipes, the meal kits, the prepared foods, the supplements, the shakes, the bars, the food discounts, and they've maybe worked for a period of time, right? Because they solve one or two pain points, make things a bit easier, give you some focus for a period of time, but they're not sustainable. And they're not actually getting you to what you want, which is a lasting lifestyle change. And as a behavior change expert, I believe it's because they're missing what it actually takes to change behavior. If you want to change how you eat, we got to appeal to your brain first. You got to learn how to eat. We teach our kids how to drive, how to read, how to do math, and no one's teaching us how to eat. And that's the problem. And you've got to connect the dots. So that not only are you getting to the weight you want to be at, but you're solving inflammation because that will help you do everything. Because if you're still walking around with those headaches, those digestive issues, issues, those eczema flare-ups, you haven't figured out how to eat right for you and you're not going to stick with it. And then there's the food skills. Eating is a verb. It's a series of behaviors we go through over the course of our day. And if you want to change it, you got to learn how to assemble that plate no matter where you're eating, whether it's Nana's buffet table, whether it's the airport kiosk or that restaurant menu or the prepared food section of the supermarket or in your own kitchen. How do you cook it and flavor it so you can move beyond raw, make it taste amazing and create so much variety so that you can appeal to even the pickiest of eaters? You can fry an egg without a recipe. You can make a pasta dinner without a recipe. The same thing has to be true for more of these foods if you want to eat them more regularly. And at the end of the day, you need an easy way to get there. So many people have great intentions, but they take on too much too soon. They burn out. It's this rigid jail sentence of deprivation or a diet that they go into and they just can't stick with it. And that's because you need to be guided through a change process that really helps make sure you don't get overwhelmed. It's manageable and you can fit it into your life. And that's really what my program does and what we set out to do. And so I am here to tell you change is absolutely possible. I've seen it for the thousands of people that have been through my program. And let's get started with you today. So what I want you to do is get yourself a blank piece of paper and something to write with. And we are going to map out your plan. And what I want you to do is copy what you see on my screen. And you can pause the video um, and pick back up when you have it copied. Because what we want at the top is the title, my plan, eat well. You want to make a huge plus sign in the middle of it. And then you want to write in signs of inflammation for that box. You want to write in what I'll lose for the one to the right. And then for the lower left, actions and include a number one and a number two. And then include three boxes, breakfast ideas, lunch ideas, and snack ideas. So hit the pause button and then restart when you're ready. So step one, let's identify your signs of inflammation. So the opportunity really is to eat to feel better. Over half of us, so that's half of the people you know and love, are living with a disease or condition driven by inflammation that's improvable with diet. So they're living with things like anxiety and depression, fatigue, belly fat, joint pain, digestive issues, headaches and migraines, skin conditions, food sensitivities, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, and cancer. And healthy eating, when done correctly, is reducing inflammation. Think of inflammation like a smoldering fire that's burning. And it's so harmful because it's destroying healthy blood vessels, tissues, and cells. And what I'm going to take you through next are conditions that it is linked to. So if you see any of these on the slide in your life, they're a sign that you got inflammation and you need to do something about it. Also, though, it's a sign that these conditions are connected to inflammation, so eating to reduce it will help. So where you carry your weight matters. It turns out if it's in your chin or your arms or your thighs or your behind, it might be bothering you and you want to get rid of it. But from an at-risk health standpoint, the place you really got to focus on is if it's in your belly region because that's a sign of inflammation and you need to do something about it. Because if not, you're going to start to see the other conditions I take you through next pop up in your life if they haven't already. Mood and brain conditions are connected to inflammation. So depression and anxiety, ADD, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, seizures, pain. So things like headaches and migraines, joint pain, arthritis, fibromyalgia, digestive issues are signs of, of inflammation. So IBS, Crohn's, colitis, ulcers, gas, bloating, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, heart disease and stroke high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, diabetes, so type 2, metabolic syndrome, or any elevations in your blood sugar level. 
immune and autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, chronic fatigue, multiple sclerosis, thyroid, allergies like asthma, eczema, anything with an itis. And then there's cancer. And COVID-19 is connected to inflammation. This is from the New York Times. Doctors have found that some of the serious damage infected adults have endured has been caused not just by the virus itself, but by an aggressive immune response that creates destructive inflammation in the body's organs. So what I want you to do now is write in your signs of inflammation. So for me, it was belly fat, headaches, constipation and heartburn, joint pain, and lung disease. Take you back to this slide, pause the video, and write your, your signs of inflammation in, and then hit the restart button when you're ready. So step two, let's identify why this matters to you. This is really important because if you don't set an intention for yourself, and by that I mean really identify what it is that you're going to lose if you don't take this on. This is going to remain a nice to do, and yeah, I should do it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, but with life taking over, you never will. So the people that we have found that really are able to change their behavior really focus and ground themselves in why this matters to them and why now. And so I want you to really think about and answer this question for yourself. What will you lose if you don't figure this out and get your eating working better for you? What's at stake? What will you miss out on? What will happen? So for me, it was, I'm going to keep running to the bathroom with my digestive issues. I'm going to miss out on life, or I'm not going to be able to keep up with my kids, or I'm going to be sick and not able to do the things that I love, or I'm going to have a, a shorter life. So some thought starters to help you ground in this into, in what matters to you. Maybe you're tired of feeling bad. So it's, I want to be energy to do what I love, or I'll feel uncomfortable with the pain, the bloating, the constipation, or I won't feel good about how I look. Maybe you're tired of missing out. I won't be able to play with my kids and my grandkids, or I won't be able to take hikes and kayak and do the things I love. Or maybe it's that you won't be able to live life on your terms, whether it's the length of life, or you'll continue to feel badly and have low energy, or you'll be held hostage by your migraines or your digestive issues, or the disease is going to rob you of the life that you want to lead. So I'm going to leave this screen on, come up with a couple of these for you, and then hit the restart button when you're ready to keep going. All right, we're halfway there. Let's work on step three, which is pick two easy actions you can take. So it turns out in the world of healthy eating and the guidance from the experts, there's general consensus around what that is, which is so awesome because it means healthy eating isn't this weird, fragmented, crazy thing. If you look at what the Heart Association is saying, the Diabetes Association, the Cancer Society, you look at the two diets that perform the best from a health outcome standpoint, as well as people enjoy living and eating on them, so the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet. You look at evidence-based guidance, so Harvard's Healthy Eating Plate, where they looked at large groups of people over long windows of time and said, how do they eat? What diseases do they get? And what guidance can we give people that doesn't include any food lobbying? No one's trying to sell you anything. And what they're basically all saying is get your foundation lined up with these core principles and you go a long way to slowing down, avoiding, and managing most of the major diseases and conditions of our time. So things like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, and cancer. What also happens is it helps you with so many of the other things that are connected to inflammation that are impacting your quality of life. So things like anxiety and depression, fatigue, belly fat, energy, joint pain, digestive issues, headaches and migraines, skin conditions, food sensitivity. Healthy eating done correctly is reducing inflammation. And the way I want you to think about this is actually, even in the world of healthy foods, it's not all the same. You want to move yourself to a place of imbalance where you're eating and crowding in some foods, you're reducing and eating less of others, and then you're identifying what you don't digest well. And the reason why is undigested food particles can make their way out of your gut into your bloodstream. Your immune system gets activated to do what it's supposed to do, which is clean things up. The problem is it gets started and revved up and it's not shutting down and it's creating inflammation. So these three things are what you want to do. 
right? And how you turn it into a lifestyle that you love is what my program helps people do. And what we're going to do for the purposes of this discussion is we're going to focus on one thing in number one and one thing in number two. So let's get started. Your job is to really think of yourself as someone who crowds in nutrient-rich foods. Over the course of that day, you are looking to add awesome stuff into what you and your family are already eating. I want you to eat more vegetables and fruits. You want to aim to make them half of what you eat a day. And when I say eat the rainbow, I don't mean Skittles, but diversify your portfolio. Tons of colors, tons of shapes, half raw, half cooked, eat all kinds because there's so much they don't know about the nutrients that are coming in these real natural whole foods. And green, as my grandmother used to say, is a color that goes with everything. Crowd that one in, but eat the rainbow. Include healthy proteins when you eat. So look for those plant-based protein sources like the beans and lentils, the unsalted nuts and seeds. And for fish, the fatty fish are great, like the salmon, the mackerel, and choose lean cuts of meat. So how do you turn this into action? What I want you to do is think of yourself as that assembler, right? And you're assembling two to one, and you can do it anywhere. So whenever you eat, take a plate and mentally draw a peace sign on it. And what I want you to do is, that's dividing that plate into thirds, you're going to fill two parts of it with carbohydrates, and I'll talk to you next about what those are, and one part protein. So when I say carbohydrate, the two part of that plate, that's actually anything that grows in the ground. So that's vegetables, that's fruits, and it's also whole grains. I want you to focus on the vegetables and fruits versus the grains, and the reason why is uh, you know, you've got to figure out ultimately the right amount of grains and the right kinds for you. We want them to be whole. So you're getting all the nutrients in, but there's a, a large swing in terms of how well people do with types of grains and how many. And my program helps people figure that out. But for the purposes of what we're talking about here, I really want you to think of that carbohydrate part of your plate as the vegetables and some fruits. For the protein part, which is the one part of that plate, Let's talk about the plant-based sources first. So beans and lentils. There's no end to bean dips you can find. There's chocolate hummus. There's, you know, Italian bean dips, Mexican bean dips. Um, and for beans, just find the lowest salt version you can find and rinse them really well a bunch of times and toss them into everything. I have them lined up in my cabinet in rows. For nuts and seeds, go for unsalted. You can find them roasted. You can find them raw. You can find them slivered, sliced, all kinds. Um, and they are making so many awesome nut butters now. So it used to just be peanut butter, but there's almond butter. I actually found a pistachio butter in the market at my stop and shop last week. For animal proteins, that's eggs, chicken, fish. And for dairy, um, Harvard recommends that you have no more than one to two servings a day. And you learn kind of why in my program. But what you want to do is just keep yourself to a serving, those, that one to two servings. So a serving is a slice of cheese or a cup of a yogurt or a milk. So let's talk about the eat less, right? And that's sugar. So the problem actually isn't that we're having sugar and you can have sugar. The problem is that the average American has taken in about three times the amount of sugar that our bodies were ever designed to handle. And that's a problem and it's creating inflammation. So in my program, we teach you a bunch of ways to get your sugar into alignment in places that you didn't realize you were getting skunked. But what I want to talk to you about is how you navigate sugar with packaged processed foods, because that's kind of where I think a lot of people get into trouble and that's a lot of us are eating those things and that's okay. You can, but what you want to do is know your daily limits. So there's a number that they set in terms of grams for different age and you know level people. So for women, it's 24 grams in your packaged processed foods. For men, it's 36. For young kids, it's 16 all the way up to like that 32 with the guy with his headphones on. Um, but when I'm talking about packaged processed foods. I'm not talking about like your spinach that comes in a plastic wrap or your apples in a bag. I'm talking about a blended product, right? That gets created with a bunch of ingredients in it. And so what you, when you're eating those kinds of foods, you want to stick to this daily gram number. So let's play it out. What you want to do then is add up what you're eating over the course of the day and stick to your limits. So read labels to help you turn that product over, look at the nutritional panel. You'll see the serving size, which is really important because you got to understand how much you're eating. And then it'll tell you per serving size, how many grams of sugar. So in this one power bar, I've had 29 grams of sugar. So you can see as a woman, that's like blown my whole day. So before you get super depressed, what you do is you use that information to help you make change. 
So your job then is to choose versions that you like, but that have less sugar. So instead of that Lara bar at 24 grams, go for the Kind bar at five. Instead of those sugar covered raisins in the total raisin brand at 17 grams for just three quarters of a cup, go for the regular version at five grams and add your own raisins. Don't get me started on smoothies and flavored yogurts. And you just got to be careful because they're throwing so much sugar into this. So look at the Stonyfield Farm Organic Super Smoothie, right? You're like, I'm being so good drinking this thing. It's 38 grams of sugar. Yeah. So you're way better off kind of, I mean, you'll see, I, I take you through kind of, um, there's a video where you can make a smoothie um, that um, you can get to at the webpage. I'll give you at the end because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of making your own versus buying the ones that you get in the stores because uh, they just have so much sugar. But so instead of having that yogurt based smoothie drink at 38 grams, go for plain Greek yogurt. It's higher in protein, which will slow the release of sugar and keep you full and satisfied longer. Buy the plain, add your own vanilla, add your own sweetener, add your own fruit, and you are way better off when you look at these numbers. So what I want you to do right now is write in your two actions. So number one is going to be assemble two to one. And number two, when you're eating packaged processed foods, keep your sugar grams to your total gram per day number. So for me as a woman, it's 24. And so here's the page you can freeze the video at and type in and, you know, write in if you're a man, it's 36. And if you're a woman, it's 24. And then hit the start button when you're ready to get going. All right, we're into the final quadrant. What are you going to eat, right? So if you think about that, your job is to assemble two to one. Let's come up with some good breakfast ideas, lunch ideas, and snack ideas. And what I want you to do is start with what you and your family are already eating. So my guess is for breakfast, you're cycling through maybe three or four different options. So write those down on your piece of paper and think about how it is that you would adjust them to make the proportions more two to one. So let me play it out. So for breakfast, instead of just having eggs and toast, right, or instead of having an omelet that's just eggs and cheese, if I'm trying to make that two to one, I got to cram the veggies into that. So do I have a side salad with my omelet like I'm eating brunch? Or do I do some frozen spinach, some frozen broccoli that I saw in some cold water, saute in a pan and add some, you know, red peppers or tomatoes too with a little bit of cheese? Do I throw some beans into that omelet? Um, for cereal, instead of eating just plain cereal or plain oatmeal, you got to get the protein in there. So is it some swirls of a nut butter? Is it some regular nuts that you put in? Is it a hard boiled egg that you eat on the side with it? And you're getting some fruits into there too, to bump it up. Um, my kids love waffles. So I do a hundred percent whole grain waffle and I slather on a nut butter and give them some fruit on top. Um, there's a recipe and there's a video that you can go to for, um, after I, I give you the URL at the end of this where you can make a dark green smoothie because it's an awesome way to get the greens, the blueberries, the protein into you. And it's got to be cold enough and sweet enough. And I have kids loving it, families loving it. People that go through my program really love it as a way to kind of just get themselves off the grains for breakfast and to see if they notice a difference in how they feel when they're really front load with a lot of veggies and some really good stuff. So you can actually pause the video before you move on to the lunch section and write in some of your breakfast ones and adjust them. And so for lunch, it's the same principle. You're eating two to one. So what are the things you typically have? I know for me, it's usually a salad with protein. So a big trap that people fall into when they're trying to eat better is they're like, I have a salad and they don't have any protein in it. And they end up being hungry in like an hour or really not satisfied. So is it a hard boiled, some hard boiled eggs or egg salad on it, tuna salad on it? Are there beans on it, chicken on it, you know, fish of other kinds on it? Get the protein onto that salad and assemble that two to one. Um, I'm also a huge fan of leftovers from dinner. So I make a lot of dinner and then we end up eating it for lunch the next day. And so assemble two to one. Think two vegetables or double the vegetable on my plate and one part protein. And even when you're eating out somewhere, right? Yeah, I notice a lot of times I'll say on a menu, hey, I see you got asparagus with that other entree. Could I get asparagus with my salmon and can I get a side salad? Um, and that way you're just assembling and taking home what you don't want, um, but assembling that plate two to one. If you're having a sandwich, get some veggies into it or get a side salad with it or do some cut up carrots and cucumbers and peppers 
Soups are great. Dump the veggies into them and change the proportions of them, right? Get them how you want them. And there's a lot of those quick service restaurants now where you're creating bowls where it's like vegetables, give me more vegetables. I'll pay you. Give me more vegetables. Throw in a little bit of the protein, some grains and a dressing. And I am out the door having assembled my bowl the way I want it. So pause the video, write in some of your lunch two to one ideas. And the next piece I want to talk to you about are snacks. And in my program, we actually call them power boosts because they play a really good role in crowding in what you're eating and helping you make half of what you eat a day, vegetables and fruits. That's the goal of them. And they, they play a really good role. The challenge is that I think sometimes people assemble and think of a snack as kind of junky food they shouldn't be eating. And so take that out of your head and think of them as a real opportunity to crowd good stuff in. So what I want you to do is plan for two a day, and they happen between your meals. So one's between breakfast and lunch, and then between lunch and dinner. And they're great because it'll help you go into your meals less hungry. So it'll be easy for you to make better choices. And you'll also notice that your body just starts to get into a really nice routine. So it helps you avoid overeating and helps you kind of crave good stuff. So what I'm showing you here is raw, but it doesn't need to be raw. But let's just start. So I say make one of them vegetable and protein and make the other fruit and protein. The reason why I do that is if I don't, people will just eat tons and tons of fruit and I really want to get the vegetables up in your day. So for that top row, look at it. Is it cut up red, orange, yellow peppers with some hummus, any kind of flavored hummus you like? Is it cucumbers with some unsalted cashews? Is it olives and baby carrots with a hard boiled egg? Uh, for fruit and protein, I love a sweet gala apple with a beet flavored hummus that I find in my regular market. Or is it cut up berries and fruit with some um, unsalted almonds? Is it a clementine with string cheese? And cooked food works too. So is it leftovers from dinner the night before? Maybe some roasted cauliflower with some chicken on the side as the two to one. Is it a chili, like a smaller size serving of what you've been eating or a soup? You name it, you just assemble and, and make it work. So you can pause the video and just start by thinking about what are some vegetables you like and what protein could you pair with it? And then what are some fruits you like and what protein could you pair with it? And you can pause on this screen and then hit the restart when you're ready. I want you to set a snacking plan for yourself, okay? And in my house, we call it the one, two, three. And the idea is that, you know, a lot of people when they're trying to eat better, they really want that crunchy snack and they're like, I can't have it. I just can't. And I like to say, no, you can have it. Just eat the other two first. So one is your fruit and protein, two is your veggie and protein, and three is that awesome crunchy reward. Get yourself some good containers. It sounds crazy and really simple, but at the end of the day, if you have something easy to assemble into, it becomes so much easier. I love the Sistema brand because they have a lot of different compartments, but when you're at, you know, uh, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond, um, you're at kind of a lot of those places, TJ Maxx, they just have awesome kind of containers that you can buy and you can find tons of them online. There's great ones to take a salad into work with you and they have the freezer kits like the packet one where the whole thing folds up and goes in your freezer so no need for ice packs. Bento boxes are awesome so you can just assemble into these little compartments and take the stuff with you. It makes it super easy. And pack up your food for the day. I like to call it one and done. What you want to do is think about what you're going to be eating for the day one time and then let it go. And you don't have to stress about it every time you're hungry, when you're running between meetings. What do I eat? How do I do it? No. What we do is we do it the morning of, but you can do it the night before. We get all of our containers out. There's everybody in my house. And we assemble our lunch and our two power boosts and then our crunchy snack. And everybody looks at it and they say, am I comfortable with this? Am I eating enough veggies? Do I got enough fruit? Do I have protein in what I'm eating? Does it look good? And bam, they pack it up in their little area and they've got it. And so even when my kids are not in school and they're home, they got their area with their food and they go there instead of bothering mama, which is awesome. And then so for me, I have my power boost right by my desk. I set an alarm and I remind myself. So the other key is if you want to enjoy more healthy foods, you got to play around with flavor and variety because you'll get bored eating the same three things prepared the same three ways. 
And that's really where you have to learn how to easily cook and flavor food. And in my program, we teach people what global chefs know about flavor. And so what happens is you can surround any of these foods with different flavor profiles. So does your family like Italian? Do they like Mexican? Do they like Greek? Do they like Southeast Asian foods? And that allows you to vary up what you're cooking and preparing. And that's really the key to unlocking that picky eater because it's about texture, temperature, and flavor. And that thing on the bottom, that tongue is kind of a fun thing to play with, which is there's four tastes that your tongue recognizes, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, every beautiful dish has those represented. And chefs know that there's different ingredients that you do to do that. And so we teach people in my program how to do that because if you've ever, you know, made something and you're like, okay, I made the recipe, followed it perfectly, but it needs something. I don't know, salt, give it more salt. Give it, you realize you killed it. Probably didn't need any more salt. It maybe needed a splash of fresh lemon juice, which is the sour note, or a little bit of sugar, which is the sweet note. And so once you understand how to do this, it unlocks the ability. So you're going to make a burger on Wednesday nights. Okay. Do you make it out of beans? Do you make it out of grains? Do you make it out of beef? Do you make it out of chicken? What are, you know, what are you eating for your protein? And then you can surround it. So do you take it to Italy, to Mexico, to Spain? And, and the flavors are different. Everybody's enjoying different stuff, but it doesn't become this crazy. What do I make every night? What's a new recipe? What's a new recipe? What's a new, and it becomes easier and beautiful and simple to sustain. So learning some new techniques, figuring out the foods that you like and, and approaching it from the standpoint of your life should taste delicious and you should have amazing foods that power you up well. So you got this. We mapped out your signs of inflammation. We mapped out what it is you're going to lose if you don't take this on. You've got your two actions that you're going to take. And you started to create what you can eat for breakfasts, for lunches, and for snack ideas, assembling two to one. And what you do next is you take those ideas and you translate them into your shopping list and you make sure you got the ingredients you need to make it happen. So before we end, I just want to tell you, and Harvard Pilgrim has asked me to share um, a little bit more about how there's an awesome offer for people that really want to take it to the next level. So it's a healthy eating lifestyle program. It's proven. It's online. It's self-paced. Um, you can learn more about it. It's my program at www saveryliving.com slash HPHC. And what you'll see there too is that you have the opportunity to go through that first session totally for free as our guest. It's a no risk free trial. You watch class, which is 25 minutes. You pick three actions. You work with a coach uh, through the app and it lasts for two weeks. So you'll get some really great ideas to build on what you learned on today. And if at the end of that, you say, wow, this program is for me and I really want to do it, that's when you would sign up and you would get the Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare discounted rate where you save 25%. So it's just $33 a month. There's 12 sessions. Each session lasts for two weeks. You can stop anytime with a click. And it's also FSA and HSA eligible. So I wish you the best please go to www.saveryliving.com slash HPHC. You can learn more about it, see what people have to say about it. And you'll also be able to click to get to a link of that breakfast smoothie <laughs> video and recipe. So start your day in a different way and see what you feel and what you notice. So I wish you the best. Uh, live well, eat well, be well. <laughs>